This is the video competency for MA180 bandaging. Um, the first thing that you'll do for your competency is to go to the other room and physically do a medical aseptic hand wash. The next thing that you'll do is gather your equipment. The equipment that you need for this particular competency is your patient's chart, an encounter form, a black pen, two elastic bandages, one roller gauze bandage, tape, and a dressing. Two by two dressing would be fine. Okay, so I have all of my equipment gathered. I've already washed my hands, so the next thing I'm going to do is identify my patient and explain the procedure. So I'll call my patient, Erin Woods. Hi, Erin, how are you today? I'm very good. Good. You want to have a seat up here on the table for me, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have our patient have a seat on the table. We assist them if needed, and then I need to identify my patient by asking her her date of birth. Erin, can you tell me your birthday, please? Uh, my birthday would be April 10th of 2003. Okay, great. Again, I'm going to verify that with the chart. Okay, Erin, that's what I have down today. Now I need to explain the procedure to my patient. Today the doctor has ordered us to go ahead and wrap both of your arms and your right ankle. Okay? Okay. All right, so um, do you have any questions before we begin? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and start over here with your right arm. Next, we want to have the patient put this in a relaxed, natural position. So just kind of relax your arm down. I'll kind of hold it a little bit. And to start each of the bandages, what we're going to do is you always want to unroll the bandage to the patient's skin like this. See how that's unrolling right to the patient? This is incorrect. If I take it, unroll it, and then wrap. That is not correct. The bandage should roll right off of the roll, right on to the patient's skin. Now, on this wrist, what I wanna do is I don't wanna start here, because if I do this, then when my patient's done, see how when she moves her wrist, see how that's wrinkling up as she moves? So I wanna start up just a little bit so that doesn't happen. We start each of these bandages which, with what is called a circular turn. So I'm going to wrap it snug, but not too tight. And this first turn is going to go directly on itself. I'm going to take a little bit of this corner, bring it out, fold it up. Now, when I fold it up, I don't want to pull the rest of this bandage up because that will create a lump. So I just want to fold it flat with that first pass. And then I want to come around and hold that little jut, that little triangle corner that I have up there because what that does is help keep the bandage from slipping. Each of these bandages will start out that way. So now, this is going to be in spiral technique. So I have my circular turn, which is directly on top of itself there. I have my dressing that's on my patient. Now what I'm gonna do is start advancing. And when I advance, I'm just gonna advance in a spiral fashion. Again, keeping it snug. And my spacing needs to be one half to one third the width of the bandage. So I'm gonna make sure that my spacing is consistent that each pass I have about the same amount of space in between, watching to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles. One half to one third the width. Now I'm getting up here near her elbow, so what I wanna do is instead of going at an angle, I wanna straighten it out and do another circular turn. Again, those circular turns are directly on top of themselves. Now I need at least two full turns to be a circular turn. In this case, I have a little more. I'm right at two full. It's okay if I have a third or even a fourth as long as it doesn't inhibit the patient. So I'm finished there. Now what I need to do is I need to secure the bandage with a piece of tape. Okay, so now my bandage is nice and secure on my patient. I have a circular turn to begin with, a circular turn to end with, nice spacing in between, it's consistent. Now what I need to do is I need to do what's called a circulation check on my patient. Okay, Erin, will you wiggle your fingers for me? Does that feel too tight or too loose? Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm gonna feel her fingers to make sure they're not cold. I'm gonna look at her nail beds to make sure they're not turning blue, which they look fine, her hand is nice and warm, and she has movement, so that's all I need to do for now. You can just rest that there. And we're gonna go ahead to the other side, and I'm going to do her left forearm in a reverse spiral technique. So, same thing, relax your arm nice and loose. I'm gonna unroll the bandage again to the patient's skin, okay? So I'm going to start to where I don't inhibit the wrist movement, but I secure her arm. 
So again, nice and snug. I have that little corner that juts out. A little more here. There we go. So this circular turn, put your shoulder down, relax. There you go, right like that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to fold that up. So again, here I don't see how this is rolled up like that. You do not want that. You want that to be flat with the bandage. So I have my two circular turns. Make sure there's no wrinkles. Everything's smoothed out. Now, hold your arm a little bit. Now what I need to do is I'm going to advance at a very steep angle and come down and continue around the patient's arm. Okay, keeping it nice and snug. So again, the movement is a steep angle up, come down, and instead of going back the way I came, come down and continue around the patient's arm, keeping wrinkles at a minimum. So again, up at a steep angle, down and continue around my patient's arm. And I think I can get one more out of this, up, down. Now remember, you need those two circular turns at the end. So if I don't have enough to make two full turns, which I don't, now I need to rewrap, unwrap that last turn so that I have enough for two full circular turns. Okay, so I'm from right here then, what I need to do is to have, there's my one turn, Here's my second turn, and now I can secure the wrap. The reason we need two full circular turns is if I don't have two full circular turns, two full turns, these uh, metal fasteners will poke into my patient's skin. Okay, so again, on this particular bandage, what I have is my two circular turns to begin with, my advancing with the reverse spiral technique, and then two circular turns to end with. All right, so I got to do my circulation check. All right, Erin, does that feel okay? Too tight, too loose? Mm -hmm. All right, can you wiggle your fingers for me? So my patients wiggle their fingers. I'm going to look at the nail beds, and I'm going to feel. Everything feels fine. Then I'm going to come back and check this one. Everything still feeling okay here? Yep. Not too tight? Nope. All right, great. I'm going to go ahead and have you slip your right shoe off. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and wrap your ankle next, okay? All right, so down here, what you wanna do, the first thing is have your patient flex their foot. So can you pull your toes up just a little bit? Keep them right like that for me, okay, Erin? Mm -hmm. All right, so again, unrolling it properly, and we're gonna make our anchor, which is right on top of itself. Pull that out, and it's always distally to the patient that we make that anchor, okay? So distal farthest away. Keep your foot flexed a little bit more, babe. Thank you. And we'll do that circular turn as our beginning anchor. Again, that circular turn is right on top of itself. So I got that accomplished. So now what I'm gonna do is go up and around the ankle and come back down. So here is where I need to make sure that I get all of the um, wrinkles out of the wrap because what that'll do is cause circulation problems. And that X should be right over the center of the foot. Keep your foot flexed, there you go. So now I'm gonna do another pass. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to come down and back up. So now what I need to do, you also wanna make sure you get good height in the back. Emily, if you can look at the back. So you don't want this to be too low to where if she puts a shoe on or something, it'll inhibit. So you want to get some good height in the back. And then also this ending anchor, you need two full passes. So you want that high enough because the purpose of this is to keep this wrap up. Okay. You also need to continue to check the patient to make sure that they kept their foot flex throughout the procedure. These last two anchors or circular turns directly on top of themselves, no wrinkles. And then secure with clips. Okay, does that feel okay, Erin? Well, actually, one of these feel like it's poking. Poking a little bit? Yes, all right, let's try this tad. again. So we'll lighten that a little bit because I do have two full turns on there. So, all right, can you move your toes? Can you wiggle them? All right, her toes feel okay. Now she has blue finger, uh, toenail polish on, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to tell there. But now what I want to do is I want to go back and recheck all of them. How does this one feel? I'm still okay? Still okay. Okay, circulation check here. This one okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and toes are still good here? Yes. All right, let me help you put your shoe on there. All right, okay, Erin, we are all done for today. I just need you to take this encounter form up to the front desk for me, okay? So now, for this encounter form, what we're gonna do, same thing, date of service, today's date. 
patient's name, patient's date of birth, the 99212 for the procedure code. Now, we have uh, ankle pain circled here because I wrapped her ankle and arm pain circled because I wrapped two of her arms. Over on this side, we're going to circle supplies because that's what I used. <clears throat> we're wraps on my patient so that we can bill for that. All right, Erin, you can take that up to the front. Let me help you down. And you can go up to the front and check out. Thank you. All right, now the last thing that we have to talk about then is documentation. So the documentation in this particular case is pretty extensive. So what we need to do is we need to put today's date and time. If you have an error, make sure you correct it properly. I had a couple errors in this one. So I wrapped the patient's right forearm with roller gauze. So what you wrapped, what you wrapped it with, and then the technique in spiral technique. So it reads, wrapped patient's right forearm with roller gauze in spiral technique. Then I wrapped the patient's left forearm with elastic bandage in reverse spiral technique. Then I wrapped the right ankle with elastic bandage in figure eight technique. So I have what I wrapped, what I wrapped it with, and the technique I used. Now I also checked her circulation in all of those areas. So I checked, um, checked all three areas for circulation and all three areas are intact. So I not only need that you check circulation, but that circulation was good or intact or sufficient, something along those lines, so that you check circulation and the results of that circulation. So there's a lot to remember in the documentation. And then again, as usual, sign it first initial, last name. Um, now that I have my documentation done, the next thing that I need to do is to clean the patient's room because my patient was on the table. So I'm gonna remove the paper. <coughs> Wipe down the table. Now, if I had the leg rest out, I'd wipe it down, but I didn't, so that's not necessary in this case. And then bring the table paper back over the table. Now, all that's left for me to do is to go wash my hands in the medically aseptic uh, technique. So once I'm finished, I'll go do my hand wash, and that's when the time will stop for your competency.